Welcome to Port St. Lucie. Uh, this is Professor Teferro for Lesson 9 of 21st Century Japanese Commerce. Uh, in our last lesson, we examined the problem posed by uh, China to the uh, Japanese economic structure and their market shares in particular, uh, because uh, the uh, Chinese Belt and Road was reducing market shares of uh, Japan's products all along the corridors of the Belt and Road, several of which were uh, major trading areas for Japan. Um, Japan, of course, was excluded from the Belt and Road, uh, so they had to make their own uh, contingency plans. None of them were terribly attractive. They have four potential uh, reactions to the Belt and Road. Um, the first contingency is to make war on China, <laughs> but that's not going to happen because uh, Japan only um, spends 2% uh, now of their uh, gross national product on national defense. That is not enough to um, accomplish two things. One, win a war against China, which they can't do, um, they don't have nuclear weapons either, and China does. So it would be a very poor decision to declare war on uh, China uh, or to have even military operations against China in the South China Sea. Uh, these would be very poor option, uh, a very poor option for Japan to select. Um, the second option for Japan is to combine their efforts with the United States, who is also losing market share in the Asian theater of economic operation. And at first glance, this might appear to be a viable solution, but ultimately it will boil down to a uh, military confrontation in the South China Sea between China and the United States and Japan. And this is also a counterproductive end result where nobody really wins and everybody loses. Uh, instead of win-win, it's lose-lose. So. Um, that is not really an attractive option either. Not to mention the uh, when the United States becomes your partner, they tend to get involved in your internal affairs and they tend to have military outposts in your country. And Japan doesn't want any more of that. They've had enough of that in their past 70 years. So option number two is not terribly attractive either. Option number three, a strictly economic alliance between uh, Japan and others who are omitted from the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, and that came to uh, mean countries like India, um, Australia, Korea, um, uh, any countries that were not in the Belt and Road were automatically allies and uh, potential alliance partners for Japan in their quest to uh, offset some of the negative effects of the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, that has been partially successful and uh, remains Japan's best option up until this point, but it's still not very thrilling because it does not stop the Belt and Road Initiative in all of these corridors. There will be damage. There will be economic losses to Japan that probably will not be able to be avoided. Um, only an economic alliance with the United States and the Asian countries in the um, Belt and Road corridors uh, would provide Japan with an economic um, solution to this particular problem. At this point in time, they have not achieved that, um, primarily because the United States is relatively uh, passive in their approach to economic problems in Asia. Um, so um, that's where Japan is now. Um, they will still be a prosperous country. They will still be a world leader in several areas. Um, but they will have some of their market shares dented by China's Belt and Road Initiative, and there doesn't seem to be any um, solution for that. Uh, until next time, uh, this is Professor Teferro from Port St. Lucie, uh, wishing you all a happy and healthy night. Take care. Bye-bye.